Hello my spooky friends and happy Halloween. Did you really think that I was going to let Halloween slip by without posting a spooky repot? No, no. So here I am. I hope that you are all having a wonderful, fun and safe Halloween so far. Feel free to cozy up, grab yourself a warm beverage and settle into the stories that I am about to share. I will show you what we are creating in today's video. If you are new to my spooky repot videos, I don't so much focus on what I'm doing in the footage. It's more just about the stories and then I'm kind of working on this as a background image, I guess. So uh, I will just show you it before we start. So I created this eyeball, weird eyeball planter type of situation. Uh, it's not perfect by any means, but that's okay. I got the inspo from a Pinterest post, so I can link that down below. And I have potted my beautiful philodendron McDowell into it. So yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Also, one more thing that I did want to say in this video, I now have my official Spooky Repot merch live. Thank you so much to everyone who has made a purchase so far. I appreciate it so, so much. These shirts are so soft and cozy and I've just been absolutely loving mine. Every merch purchase really helps me out. So yeah, thank you so, so, so much. And of course, if you're not able to buy my merch, that's 100% okay. I love you so much still just for watching my videos. But if you are interested in the merch, I will have it linked down below. Okay, I think that that covers everything. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and leave me a comment down below. I would love to chat with you. Okay, now let's settle into some spooky stories. Okay, so once again, thank you so much to everybody who has submitted a story. I still have many to share and am also still accepting submissions, so please send me your weird, strange, and spooky stories. I would love to hear from you. I will put the email that you can send them to on the screen and in the description box down below. Also, just a reminder that I will only be sharing names if I am given permission in the email. Story number one. My dad's coworker had a second job as a grave digger. Early one morning, he was in a cemetery preparing for a funeral. Most mornings, cemeteries are pretty quiet, so he was surprised to see a man walking around that day. He got back to work, and when he looked up again, the man was gone. My dad's co-worker came back to that grave after the funeral. He had a habit of saying a few words to the deceased before completing the burial. This day, he lowered the coffin into the ground, stood over it, and said, A lot of people came to your funeral. You must have lived a great life. He finished the burial and went home. That night, he woke with a start. The man he had seen in the cemetery that morning was standing over his bed. The man touched his hand and said, Thank you for what you said to me. It really meant a lot. Then he vanished. My dad's coworker says he doesn't speak to the coffins anymore. Story number two. Back in the mid-90s, my fiancé and I decided to take a road trip up the California coast on Old Highway 1. We decided a great stopping point was this little roadside inn called the Wallala Hotel. It was going to be late by the time we arrived for check-in, so we called ahead to get our reservation in order. We were told there would be a key under the mat for us. We arrived shortly after 1am. The ride up was long and windy. The road, through the thickness of the trees, was pitch black. We were grateful for the rest from our trip. When we arrived, we were concerned that maybe we had stopped at the wrong location. Not a soul was in sight. Not one car, no lights, no bikes, nothing. Nobody seemed to be around but us and the roaring sound of the ocean waves breaking on the cliffs below. We went to the mat and sure enough, there was an old-fashioned key on a plastic key holder with the number to our room. We entered through the back in a very dimly lit hallway. The old light flickered, 
as if it too would like to be extinguished. Once in our room, we found it to be Victorian, with ten-foot-high ceilings and old windows that barely opened a crack, and therefore it had an old, musty smell. Victorian wallpaper lined its walls, and the bathroom had that old octagon-shaped black-and-white tile with a single pedestal sink. I would have found all this rather endearing had I not had this overwhelming sense of dread the minute I stepped into the suite's interior. Immediately I felt as if we were being watched. My fiancé, who was a total skeptic, brushed off my feelings as he was oblivious to the sense of despair and subdued ambiance this room gave off. I tried to ignore my intuition and proceeded to get ready for a much-desired respite at this point. As I lay in the queen-sized bed, with its wrought iron frame looming over my head, I could swear I felt as if there was a presence there in that room with us. I kept looking at an old light fixture from the ceiling thinking, someone was hung from there. Later, I heard a bizarre noise. This was additionally strange as the constant wave crashing from the outside should have cut off all sound. But no, I heard the ceiling fixture creak. I stared quietly, almost not breathing, at the fixture. Sure enough, the light fixture started to move. Slowly, as if there was some pressure upon its foundation, it started creaking back and forth. Then I saw the shadow figure. At first, I thought it was just my eyes deceiving me, or that my drowsy state caused this ellipse in my vision. But as my adrenaline started to course through my veins, I knew this was not an illusion. The creature just scampered from the fixture to the ceiling, then out through a high beam above. I laid in absolute terror. I was afraid to move, wanting to run out of the room, but it was as if my body was in a state of paralysis. I finally was able to just reach for my fiancé and bury myself into him. I woke a few hours later. Daylight had shone through the room. It was amazing, the sounds from outside and below. The parking lot was full of vehicles, people were moving about, and the establishment was bustling with activity. I had to sit for a while and adjust to what I had just witnessed. It was beyond comprehension. We went down to the breakfast hall, and I spoke to a couple of people who spent the night there. They claimed they had a wonderful and relaxing evening. As a recluse individual, it was hard, but I just needed to interact with other guests. As an analytical person, I just couldn't accept what had happened to me as real. Yet, here were the facts laying before me. Believe what you may, but this truly made me review my skepticism. I will never forget my night at the Walala Hotel. Story number three. When I was around 12 years old, my father and his girlfriend broke up. She was like a second mother to me, and we were always very close. So when she got a new boyfriend, they made me my own room so I could spend the night on the weekend. Ever since I was young, I was very spiritual and could read energy from a mile away. The minute I showed up to this home, my stomach was in knots. It was an old brick home. You could see that it was very old. I was later told that the home was from the early 1900s. I walked through the door and I immediately felt a very strong negative energy. It was so heavy I could barely breathe. My dog just passed that current week so I was already pretty vulnerable. I was uncomfortable but the major issues didn't arise until later on that night. It was bedtime. We had just finished a movie in their bedroom and I went into the room they had set up for me in the home. I can't even explain the feeling. It was so dark and cold. I could barely even breathe. It felt like somebody was behind you, watching your every move. I told them I was scared when I was getting ready for bed. They told me that her niece was scared too when she'd stayed there, but it would be fine once I fell asleep. So I tried to do just that. They turned out the lights, and I closed my eyes, but I was petrified. 
there was a wooden rocking chair in the corner of the room, and I could feel an energy there, like someone was sitting there watching me. A moment later, the rocking chair started to move back and forth. I immediately pulled the blankets over my head and tried so hard to ignore it and tried to sleep, but I couldn't. I kept hearing a scratching noise coming from the right side of the room. That made me scared enough to leave and go tell my dad's ex that I was scared, that something was in my room. She told me I was making things up and that I'd be fine. She told me that her dog could sleep with me in my room and if she doesn't act strange, then I would know nothing is in there and that I was just scaring myself. So we did just that. I got into bed again, hoping that it was all in my head. But not even five minutes later, the rocking chair in the room started rocking back and forth again. The dog stood up on the bed, tail between her legs, and started barking directly at the chair. Every hair on her body was standing straight up. At that point, I was scared to even get out of bed to go get help, but I built up the courage and I ran to my dad's ex's room to tell her what had happened, and she didn't believe me. I told her to call my mother that I wasn't sleeping in that house. It was almost midnight, but my mother came to get me. I never went back. I've experienced many paranormal things in my life, but nothing will ever compare to that. The house isn't far from where I live now. I pass it sometimes, and every time I do, all those memories and feelings come flooding back. I wonder if the house remembers me like I remember it. Story number five. My grandfather and I were very close. We shared a love of animals and all wildlife. We lived with my grandparents every summer and I adored spending time with my grandfather, taking care of his birds and animals and watching wildlife shows in the evenings. When I was 11 years old, he lost his battle with cancer. No one had really explained to me what was happening, probably because of my age. All I know is one Saturday my parents left the house saying that they were visiting grandpa in the hospital. They told me to be sure to practice my piano lessons before walking to my friend's house. I started practicing around noon, after eating lunch. I kept checking the clock I had set up on the piano because I wanted to leave at 12.30. I looked at the clock at 12.15, then looked up into the beautiful antique gold frame mirror hanging over the piano. My grandfather, appearing as white and transparent, was standing behind me. He said, goodbye, and drifted out of the room. I didn't know what to think, but I wasn't scared. I felt calm, but sad too. I walked to my friend's house and spent a few hours there until my father arrived. He took me outside and told me my grandfather had died at 12.15. 46 years later, and I still miss him and talk to him, and I still have the antique gold mirror. Story number six. A few years ago, I was walking at night with my friend. We're both girls and we were just teenagers trying to clear our heads. We were walking around downtown and we stopped at a park just to talk. After sitting for about five minutes, we saw a white truck drive by slowly and then reverse a few meters to let a man out. This was also a youth church, so we assumed he worked there. The truck then slowly drove away, but the man didn't go inside. Instead, he walked the other side of the park, but we couldn't really make out the details and he seemed to just stand there, not really moving and just kind of looking in our direction. I felt kind of uneasy and I asked to leave and my friend agreed. We walked in the direction of our house, which was about 10 minutes away. And as we were walking, I turned around because I felt creeped out and I saw that the man was behind us. I didn't think it was that weird because it's kind of a common street to take to go home, but my friend decided to speed up because we're young girls walking around at night. When I turned around, he seemed to speed up too. And so we started to jog and I looked behind us to see that he was jogging too. 
We broke into a full out run and I didn't even bother to look behind us because I could hear his footsteps loudly splashing in the puddles from last night's rain. My friend and I turned, going down another park. We decided we couldn't outrun him, so we ran to the darkest, furthest corner of the park. He turned into the same park right after we huddled in our spot and seemed to stand there for a second while my friend and I watched him. He stood there and began to text on his phone, and then he started searching the park with his phone's flashlight, and we heard a car door slam from the exit of the park. Three more men came out, and one said, No one left, so they must be here. My friend and I decided we were not going to watch how this would play out. They began calling out that they were the police and just wanted to talk, but my friend and I didn't believe them and we very carefully hopped over the fence leading into someone's yard and into several more yards to get about half a block from the men. We then sprinted down the street and took the long way home to avoid the truck that was parked at the exit. I noted that it was the same white truck that dropped the man off at the park. We were too far to catch the license plate though. I don't know what would have happened if we decided to stay, but I know it wouldn't have been good. To add to this story, this was when sex trafficking became a huge issue in my city. Story number seven. This isn't my story, but my mom's. She had found out her father had died earlier in the day and was watching TV on the couch late at night processing things while my sister and I slept in our room upstairs and my stepdad was sleeping in their room. My little sister had a leapfrog toy that was used to help kids learn how to spell lying on the floor of the living room. She heard it go off on its own which she thought was strange but didn't pay too much attention to what it said initially. And then it went off again and said G H O S T ghost. She freaked out and went upstairs to wake up my stepdad and he mumbled to her in his sleep that it was nothing. She didn't share this story with my sister and I until we were grown, since we were still living in the house and she didn't want us to be frightened. Story number eight. To begin this story, I have always had a connection to the paranormal and the dead. My mom recalls that I would freak her out when I was a toddler because I would see scary things in the house, and I have continued to see spirits. Some of the entities are bright, hazy white, and others are blacker than the night, and they all move and present themselves differently. Some slither around, others have a stop-motion effect, and some even teleport around the room. For the most part, I haven't been totally freaked out by my otherworldly visitors except for one experience I had when I went to Mexico. If you haven't heard, Mexico is on another level when it comes to the paranormal. I went to Mexico four years ago to visit my family. One of our daily customs was to get together in the evenings and hang out in the front yard. We would share stories and talk about what was going on in our lives. One of my cousins began to share that her son was having trouble sleeping at night, and my aunt jumped in and added that many of the neighbors were concerned that their kids were having trouble sleeping as well. Apparently, they were all having nightmares about a black figure. They speculated that a demon was conjured up in the neighborhood, or that a bruja, a witch, was terrorizing them in their sleep. I didn't comment anything about it out loud. But in my head, I was thinking about how silly it sounded that someone would be targeting and terrorizing the kids on the block. Let's just say I regret thinking that. My younger cousin, sister, and I headed off to bed shortly after. We all shared a bed together since space was very scarce at my grandma's house. The homes in Mexico get super hot and don't have AC, so we would sleep with the window open to get a breeze. In the middle of the night, I suddenly woke up because I was hearing footsteps outside of our window. Mind you, my grandma's brick fence was like 10 feet tall, so it would be hard for someone to just casually jump the fence. I laid there listening for more footsteps, but didn't hear anything, so I tried to go back to sleep. 
then out of nowhere, the most disgusting, awful, rotten smell engulfed the room. I sat up and looked around the room, trying to decipher what the smell was coming from. But nothing looked out of the ordinary, and my siblings and cousins were dead asleep. I was super shocked because it smelt like rotten eggs, putrid tank water, sewage, rotten meat, and dead animals all in one. The smell was so strong, I thought I was going to get a bloody nose. I laid back down and covered my face in hopes of blocking out the smell, and then I suddenly felt this intense pain in my leg that sent a shockwave throughout my whole body. It felt like something grabbed the literal inside of my leg and squeezed it to hell. I shot up and caused my sibling to wake up. She saw me howling in pain and she asked what was wrong and I told her that I had extreme leg pain and asked her if she wasn't grossed out by the smell and she told me she couldn't smell anything. Only I could smell it. The smell eventually went away and I didn't sleep the rest of the night and struggled to sleep for months. The days to follow, I developed this large bruise on my leg and the pain and the fear lingered for a long time. I think whatever was terrorizing the neighborhood children definitely came to visit me that night and proved that it was the real deal and that it was powerful enough to get past my spiritual protectors. Okay, that is it for all of the stories in today's episode. Make sure you leave me a comment down below and let me know which one was your favorite. I would love to hear from you. Once again, thank you so much to everyone who submitted a story. Please do so if you have one to share with me. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!